Universitas Brawijaya is one of the leading universities in Indonesia with more than 60,000 students in various degrees. It is awarded an A accreditation by National Accreditation Agency for Higher Education and granted the fourth best university in Indonesia based on four ICU World University Ranking. Universitas Brawijaya has 15 faculties in which Faculty of Economics and Business is the best faculty. Malang Economic University, or as known as MU, the embryo of Faculty of Economics and Business, was established by Malang Economic Higher Education Foundation on June 27, 1957, with notary degree number 26 dated on August 15, 1957. Malang Economic University merged into part of Universitas Brawijaya and was called a Faculty of Economics on October 3, 1961. Years ago, and Faculty of Economics never stopped improving itself. It was on January 14, 2011, an institutional transformation was created from Faculty of Economics to Faculty of Economics and Business. This become one of the cornerstones of fundamental change and a necessity due to internal development, as well as changes in the organization's external demands, including changes in the organization's environment, scientific development, and demands for international accreditation towards the world-class faculty. The Faculty of Economic and Business Universitas Brawijaya Mission Statement is becoming an internationally reputable higher education institution in economics and business which produce graduates possessing entrepreneurial spirit, humanity, environment, and spiritual awareness, and develop knowledge and technology in order to serve society through education and research based on local and universal values. Currently, Faculty of Economic and Business Universitas Brawijaya has three departments with 14 study programs consisting of undergraduate and postgraduate programs. Most of study programs are awarded in A by National Accreditation Agency for Higher Education and some are accredited by international accreditation agencies which are A Best 21, ACCA and AUNQA. As stated in Strategic Plan Milestone and its mission statement, achieving international recognition has become its focus. The Faculty of Economic and Business on Universitas Brawijaya has expanded its international network by conducting academic and research cooperation with university partners around the world. The Faculty of Economic and Business on Universitas Brawijaya has also distinguished itself from other business schools by designing its education and research to foster entrepreneurial spirits, multi paradigm and innovative perspective, spiritual and local values. The entrepreneurial spirit with FEBUV focuses on is exploring new ways of thinking and finding ways to solve problems or creating values to do business. We provide our students with entrepreneurial skill and knowledge through courses, laboratory and startup programs conducted by students. For instance, we provide our students with entrepreneurship laboratory where they can develop or explore ideas for their business. Market paradigm and innovative perspective is the way of seeing and interpreting any business phenomena using price paradigms from scientific approach to social context. Market paradigm is rooted from understanding the plurality of perspectives to enlighten the phenomena of business and economics in the political, social, cultural, and information technology, as well as religious values. Our students as a future generations must be aware of the global movements such as digital economy as the current millennial trend. Therefore, we deliver courses include e-commerce, financial technology, and e-business. Apart from focusing on global changes, we remain to value the local and spiritual wisdom. Our students are given with opportunities to explore local and spiritual values in their research and courses. Faculty of Economic and Business Universitas Brawijaya have an accessible facilities for disabilities as well. And Universitas Brawijaya uh, provide me an assistance to make me easier to do my activities every day in campus. Saat ini saya menjadi staff presiden bidang ekonomi. Pada hampir semua 
kesempatan dan amanah yang diberikan kepada saya tersebut semuanya bisa saya kerjakan dengan sebaik-baiknya salah satunya karena tempaan belajar waktu di S1 di Fakultas Ekonomi Universitas Brawijaya dan selama ini banyak juga dibantu oleh para alumni dari Universitas Brawijaya Faculty of Economics and Business Universitas Brawijaya strives for excellence in education by continuously improving its academic quality. As one of higher education institutions in Indonesia focusing on economics and business, we have transformed and committed to providing the best education quality. We provide the best resources to encourage our students to become agent of change. The future education will give a lot of challenges and therefore Faculty of Economics and Business in Tasbura Vijaya has many programs to support students' success. With all of our achievements, programs and excellent reputation, we believe that Faculty of Economics and Business in Tasbura Vijaya is the right path to reach your future. I got the opportunity to take a double degree program in the University of Southern Queensland in Australia. I gained more knowledge in there, especially when I learned about their languages, their cultures, and some experiences from other friends from various countries. And it was such a precious thing that I got in here. As an international student in Faculty of Economic and Business in the University of Blaujaya, I got special experience here. While studying class, I feel the dynamic learning and teaching activities. Among there is many cultural and language differences between us, but also we have the great opportunity to see many science perspectives from local and international students. The way we learn in the Faculty of Economics and Business Universitas Brawijaya isn't always within the classroom. We have the opportunity to imply our knowledge into the actual business or economical activities such as Entrepreneur Days, where we were asked to create our own business and present it. We also have company visits to gain insights on the actual industry. The Faculty of Economics and Business on the Spurgeon continuously improve its quality by transforming and creating positive contribution to produce graduates who are capable of facing global competitions and serving society. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be upon on you. A very good morning to the Dean of Economics and Business Faculty, Mr. Nurholis S.A. Embas PH, Accounting PhD. Our honorable speakers for today, Mr. Associate Professor Masal Kazu Somea from Nagoya University and Mr. Professor Munawar Ismail from Brawijaya University. And all the distinguished guests and participants of today's event. My name is Lasa Bila. I'm from Economics undergraduate student. And on behalf of the organizers, I am delighted to welcome all of you to the three-in-one program series of banking and finance lectures organized by the study program of economics, finance, and banking, economics department, faculty of economics and business, Brawijaya University. Before we start, I would like to remind all of you to rename your display name into agency or institute uh, slash your full name. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are about to begin, we would like to invite you to rise and sing Indonesian anthem, Indonesia Raya. May all we rise.
thank you. Today's lecturer, as the first series of international public lecture with the topic of monetary policy, how it works, provides a great opportunity for prospective student guests and participants to acquire theoretical knowledge regarding monetary policy. As such, today's lecturer will feature keynote speakers, which are cutting-edge session topics. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to the agenda of today's event. To begin, we will hear an open remark from Mr. Nurholis PhD as the Dean of Economics and Business Faculty of Brawijaya University. Then, there will be a lecture session moderated by Mr. Almu Izudin Fazalo. Mr. Associate Professor Masaka Zusomeya and Mr. Professor Munawar Ismail will be our honorable speakers for today's event. Afterward, we will have a question and answer session led by moderator. Before that, let me guide you all to take picture first as it will be our documentation. Excellencies and distinguished guests, please turn on your camera or webcam and in a count of one, two, three, please face forward and smile. The committee will help me to take a screenshot and in one, two, three, face the webcam and smile. One, two, three. Next slide. One, two, three. Another one. One, two, three. Another one. One, two, three. Okay. Is it good, the committee? Yes. All right. All right, excellencies and participants, we are now going to listen to the opening remarks delivered by the Dean of Economics and Business Faculty. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Norholis, PhD. Terima kasih, Mbak Salsabila. Is it clear, my voice? Is my voice clear? Crystal, sir. Okay, then. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Distinguished guests and speaker, Associate Professor Masakazu Sumia of the University of Nagoya. My colleagues, uh, Professor Munawar Ismail, who will be the second speaker today. Uh, my colleague, Vice Dean, Head of Departments, all of lecturers, and I would like to mention our moderator, Masmu Isfaz Allah from Nagoya. And my dear students, ladies and gentlemen who joined this webinar, very good morning. Selamat pagi semuanya. First of all, we should be grateful to God Almighty because we are still blessed with health and safety in the midst of this pandemic. Due to this pandemic, almost all of our activities uh, will be carried out online. And we are currently uh, carrying out this activity uh, by online too, during in Bahasa. Hopefully this kind of activity will be uh, able to achieve uh, its goals. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me explain a little bit about the program three, three in one. Uh, this is a special program uh, offered by Brawijaya University, which has the objectives. Uh, number one is to improve the academic reputation and quality of the Faculty of Economics and Business of Brawijaya by having reputable foreign lectures. And number two, uh, this is a scientific development yeah, through lectures. Uh, in dealing with the latest issues in economic condition that support uh, quality improvement through collaborative research, uh, 
uh, guest lecture or workshop or international seminars. And number three, uh, this is to realize the strategy of the Faculty of Economics and Business in achieving our vision uh, to be a world-class entrepreneurial university with uh, insight and nuances regarding this concept and theory for our students, undergraduate and postgraduates. And lastly, uh, we are also going to establish academic collaboration between Faculty of Economics and Business at Surabijaya, and hopefully we can also initiate another collaboration with uh, Nagoya University. Hopefully, Mas uh, Faiz Muesol can help us to realize that one. We are very pleased to be able to present this webinar by inviting our visiting professor today, uh, Associate Professor Masakumia of University of Nagoya. Thanks, uh, Dr. Uh, Sumia, for joining this uh, webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, with this collaboration between Utas Bravijaya and Nagoya, we also hope that uh, Dr. Masakazu Sumia in the future will also be pleased to be our visiting professors. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I understand that the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic will be severe. We are currently forced to enter a new normal situation with a different habit from before. And we've been entering economic crisis. So, in this economic crisis, we know that uh, our government already initiated uh, fiscal policy to normalize the situation. But I think that the fiscal policy alone may not be able to restore our national economy. So, of course, monetary policy has an important role in stabilizing the economy. In this regard, as Dean of the Faculty of Economics, Virginia University, I believe that the talk of our webinar today is very important and relevant. And of course, uh, as the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Business, I'd like to express our gratitude and appreciation to the Head of Economic Department, Dr. Wildan, to the Head of the uh, Economics and Banking Study Program, Dr. Satyo, who already arranged this webinar to happen. And also to uh, my brother Muiz, who uh, helped us in uh, initiating this uh, event. Hopefully this event is useful for all of you, especially our students at the Department of Economics, and of course for all of the audiences joining this webinar. Finally, uh, by asking for the blessing of God Almighty and by reciting Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I declare that this event is officially opened. Happy uh, webinar. Hopefully, this will be fruitful for all of us. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Mr. Holly's PhD, for the opening remarks. We are now continuing to our next agenda, that is to hear the lecture session by our honorable speakers. Before we do that, I would like to invite Mr. Almu Izzuddin Fazalo a lecturer in the Department of Economics, Faculty of Economics and Business, Brawijaya University, since 2012 until now. Mr. Muiz has taught analytic tools in economics, such as econometrics and statistics in economics department. And he is currently having his doctoral program in international development at Nagoya University. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Almu Izzuddin Fazalo.
Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning everybody and good morning for my dean, uh, Mr. Nurkholis. And good morning to uh, all, all the participants and also the uh, speaker, Professor Munawar and also Professor uh, Sumeya from Nagoya University. So here in this session, I'm uh, going to be as the moderator for this session. So before uh, the uh, lecture is starting, I would like to uh, explain about the time schedule for the presentation. So for uh, first presenter is Professor Sumuya from Nagoya University. Uh, he will deliver the lecture about how, how the monetary policy is uh, working. Uh, so for the Professor Sumuya, uh, you have a time about one hour and 15 minutes. And following by Professor Munawar, and also Professor Munawar will have a time about one hour and 15 minutes. And after that, uh, we will have a Q&A session about 13 minutes. So uh, firstly, I would like to read the uh, CV for, from Professor Sumaya. My I search the screen for this CV. So here, uh, Professor Sumaya is one uh, lecturer in Graduate School of International Development, Nagoya University. He teaches macroeconomics and public financial management and finance. So he uh, previous, previously, he is a associate professor in Chiba Keiza University and also teaches uh, the same majors. And he also has some uh, many experiences in abroad, in, particularly in international uh, organization. So as we can see in this uh, CV, he has also experience to be an uh, external consultant for OECD. And also he is uh, external officer for uh, JICA. And also he has uh, experience in some past year ago in the World Bank. So uh, this is the brief CV from uh, Professor Sumaya. And also from uh, Professor uh, Munawar, I will uh, read later. So um, before I uh, invite Professor Sumia to deliver the lecture, uh, maybe uh, I'm as the moderator, I will uh, manage the time to efficiently, to be efficiently. So here, uh, please welcome Professor uh, Sumia. Time is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Moise. Uh, I'm glad to see you uh, here. Um, I'm also glad to, I mean, actually, I'm, I feel honored to uh, have uh, uh, opportunity to talk about monetary policy here uh, in front of uh, uh, student and the faculty staff of Vijaya University. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, may I start a uh, lecture? Yes, yes, professor. Okay. Yes. okay. Um, I'm from Nagoya University, and then uh, we are the, uh, let me introduce a little bit about Nagoya University. Uh, we are the actually pioneer um, to accepting, I mean, having uh, uh, Indonesian students. Uh, when I was in the graduate school uh, in Nagoya University, uh, maybe quarter century ago, we still, I mean, we already had uh, uh, 10 to 15 uh, students from Indonesia. Since then, we have, uh, we are having, uh, we have been having, we have been having lots of uh, foreign students from uh, 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 Indonesia. And then uh, we have produced six Nobel our uh, Nobel Award laureate, and then uh, we are hoping uh, one day uh, one of Indonesian students studied, who studied in, in Nagoya University is going to get the uh, uh, Nobel Award. Uh, okay, let me start. Um, can I share the screen? I mean, screen? Um, yes, Professor. Okay, thank you. Uh, where is... Uh... Okay, here. 
Okay. 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 Um, I'd like to talk about uh, credit creations uh, today uh, with respect of uh, uh, monetary policy. Okay. And then uh, um, I understand um, many of audiences uh, undergraduate students. So perhaps I'm uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit talk about. Um, um, uh, monetary policy uh, first, then move on to uh, policy as well as credit creations. Okay. Um, sorry, it doesn't work. Maybe. Okay, now. Um, all right, first of all, how monetary policy works. The monetary policy is about uh, Increasing money, money supply as well as uh, uh, interest rate uh, manipulations, and then um, it depends which one, and then uh, which one to use. Highly depends on the degree of market financial market development and the countries. Um, the most widely used monetary policy instrument is open market operations, um, um, and then, but. This required a uh, secondary bond market. So um, I understand that Indonesia have a, a, a bond secondary market, but ma uh, many developing countries do not have a bond secondary market. Some of them do not even bond primary market. So uh, actually uh, in developing country, this is not, market, I mean, open market operation is not the uh, widely adopted instrument. But instead, uh, required reserve ratio. Uh, this is a uh, um, uh, tip. I mean, actually, a very powerful uh, monetary instrument uh, in developing countries. Um, what is required reserve ratio, which is sometimes called statutory reserve ratio, is you. Um, all right, when you when the depositor deposit some of uh, some make a some deposit, and then some of the deposit is going to be put aside and then uh, put up to uh, central bank. So cent they are going to. So let's say uh, I deposit hundred dollars, and then maybe reserve ratio is twenty dollars, twenty percent. In that case, out of hundred dollars, twenty dollars, I bank have to put. I mean deposit at the uh, uh, central bank. So that so that uh, all of the deposit money uh, cannot be spent for lending, and there was also some of the money, uh, uh, de some of the deposit can be prepared for uh, uh, cash. I mean, uh, withdrawing cash uh, from the depositors. So if you raise uh, reserve uh, uh, required reserve ratio, then less money available for banks to lend. So that's why actually um, uh, uh, you can control monetary aggregate, money supply, as well as uh, uh, you can control uh, uh, demand uh, uh, in the, of the economy. Okay. Um, and then discount window. This is, uh, uh, this was, uh, also, one of the main uh, monetary policy tool uh, 30 years ago, it was uh, actually direct loans from the central bank to uh, banks. Uh, if the central bank increase loans to commercial banks, then uh, banks have a lot of money and then to lend. So that's that makes maybe um, that makes uh, monetary aggregate increase. And also, uh, um, you are, I mean, 
uh, this pumps up, pumps money into the economy. And then fourth uh, instrument is interest rate, interest rate on the uh, reserve that actually, uh, statutory reserve that is actually, uh, I mentioned in the second uh, required reserve. Uh, so um, sent, uh, commercial bank, when they receive deposit, let's say hundred dollars, and then if the reserve ratio is $20, uh, commercial bank have to deposit $20 out of $100 by the depositor at central bank. That's actually required reserve ratio. It's required reserve. And then for the deposit by the commercial bank comes with uh, uh, interest rate. So, uh, and then also um, commercial bank can deposit um, um, cash, I mean, or reserve more than required reserve ratio. So sometimes um, it depends on the financial market conditions, but uh, uh, even though the commercial bank receive $100 uh, from the depositor and then uh, required reserve ratio is 20 dollars, 20%, but they can uh, put maybe $30 uh, or $40 dollars, depends on the interest rate on which comes with uh, uh, reserve, requ required reserve, statutory reserve. Okay, and then open market operation is about uh, uh, their financial operation, buying bond and selling bond in order to control uh, interest rate. Um, as maybe all of you know, uh, if you raise interest rate, then uh, what happened? Okay. Uh, in terms of macroeconomy, people when 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 the firms or companies make uh, investment, they have to have a cash or they have to have the money, right? And then in many cases they don't have money. Well, you know when the company wants to build a factory, it costs it costs maybe one million, but they don't have they don't have money. So uh, most of in many cases, they borrow from, from the banks. When they, when the entrepreneur borrow money from the bank, you ha they have to pay uh, interest rate. When the interest rate is very high, it's not easy for entrepreneur to borrow. So investment goes down, which means actually uh, GDP will slow down. And then, so GDP will slow down. That's why actually uh, inflation goes down. Yeah. So this is a way how uh, open market operation works. And all right, and then let me in explain uh, using chart. So um, in the bond market, they are not uh, they are not dealing with a bond market doesn't deal with uh, uh, interest rate, but they actually determine uh, bond price. All right. Um, all right, so this is the, uh, this diagram shows uh, bond market and then uh, vertical axis is about uh, bond price. Par price is 100 or maybe one. Uh, it depends on the countries. And then so, um, and then uh, just like a uh, demand and supply uh, of the economy, when you have a high price, uh, uh, price is high, then demand is very uh, little. But when the demand is, uh, sorry, when the price is very low, like uh, thirty dollars, then uh, demand is very high, like a uh, uh, thousand, uh, uh, one thousand one hundred eighty, something like that. Uh, so, which is actually downward sloping uh, in blue line, and then. Uh, Supply of bond, uh, which is uh, actually um, opposite to demand. Uh, when the price is low, then you don't want to uh, issue the bond or you don't want to sell the bond. Um, so let's say when the bond price is 20, then uh, supply is uh, 1,040. But uh, when the bond price is 100, is very high. In that case, uh, 
supply of bond is uh, 1160s. So upward sloping. The intersection is the uh, bond price is determined at the intersection between bond demand and bond supply. Right, uh, right now in this chart, it's $60. Yeah. So we know uh, bond price. Then how interest rate is determined is uh, shown in, on the diagram uh, on the right hand side. So you buy a bond from the uh, bond market at 60. Let's say which this is a one year maturity. So you buy 60 now and then one year later you return to the uh, you return the bond to the government. And then you get the power price, which is 100. So how you compute uh, interest rate is 100 minus 60 over 60. So that means when you have a higher bond rate, a bond price, then lower the, the, the lower the price, I mean, the lower the interest rate, the higher the bond price and then lower the uh, interest rate, which so bond price and interest rate go opposite. Yeah. So um, uh, maybe uh, maybe you you know the outcome of uh, U.S. presidential elections, and then that was uh, that took place over the weekend, and then Monday, uh, actually today uh, Tuesday in Japan, maybe Indonesia, but man, it was a couple maybe a few hours ago. It was uh, still uh, Monday in United States. What happened in U.S. market? after uh, president was uh, uh, Biden won, Mr. Biden won the election. Uh, it, the consequence was actually increase in interest rate. Yeah. Why they, we, I mean, people increase, people expect uh, interest. Uh, I mean, why interest rate increased that well, that's because Biden, Mr. Biden was elected and then traditionally Democrat, Democrat policy is actually increasing to increase spending. When the government increased spending, what happened to bond? Yeah. Uh, all right, so revenue is the same, but you increase government spending. That means actually you are going to run a deficit, wider deficit, yeah? So fiscal deficit. For the fiscal deficit, they have to, the government has to uh, issue the bond. So uh, because Mr. Biden was elected and then investors and the market are expecting uh, lots of um, 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 fiscal expenditure increase. So as a consequence, uh, people expect uh, bond is going to be issued. Lots of bonds are going to be issued. That means in this diagram, uh, blue or red, which one is going to move? Well, um, it's who supply the bond? Who is the main supplier of the bond? Is actually government, right? If you have a secondary bond market, investor sell the bond. So investor can be a, a supplier bond. But uh, if uh, in developing country is uh, main supplier of the bond is actually government. So government, uh, the, uh, the go uh, government bond issued uh, going to increase, which means uh, red line, which is a bond supply curve is going to shift to the right hand side. Yeah. As a consequence, bond price falls, then interest rate goes up. That what happened. In, over the couple of days uh, in US capital market. Okay, um, let me move on to another, right? Okay, and then, okay, this shows a uh, relationship between discount rate and in, uh, interest on excess reserve. That's actually uh, is about number three and number four. Yeah, discount window. Um, is actually, uh, as I explained, uh, this is a window through which uh, central bank uh, give loans to uh, commercial banks. And then 
interest rate on this loan is called discount rate. So, um, which is actually uh, one of the main monetary instrument and monetary policy instrument in the past. And then number four is the uh, interest rates on the excess reserves. I mean, reserves actually, not just the excess, but the reserves. Reserve means uh, in this case, uh, the deposit by the commercial bank at the central bank. As I said, uh, in the required reserve ratio policy, uh, gov uh, commercial banks uh, out of deposit put some of the uh, money out of the deposit at the central bank. And then interest rate, interest rate on this uh, reserve at the central bank is also one of the monetary policy uh, instrument. How it works? Uh, let, let us uh, discuss how it works, okay? All right, so this is a, um, in the, uh, the diagram, uh, vertical axis is actually in interest rate and the horizontal axis is actually reserve, amount of the reserve, uh, you can say cash as well. And then um, this shows how, uh, how to control market interest rate. Um, this is typically used in developing countries. And then um, how it works. Okay, uh, discount rate um, uh, is, as I said, is a loan, uh, is an interest rate on the loan from central bank to commercial banks. Yep. And the interest rate uh, on excess reserve is uh, uh, the interest rate which comes uh, with deposit uh, by the commercial bank at the central bank. Yeah. All right. What if market interest rate is greater than, uh, larger than a discount rate? Um, so discount rate is the interest rate when you borrow money from a central bank, right? Okay. Um, market rate is higher than discount rate. Which one would you like to borrow from? M money market or central bank? Well, when you borrow, it's actually the lower the better, right? So the lower the interest rate, the better, right? So if market rate is larger than, I mean, higher than discount rate, everybody, I mean, all the commercial banks borrow from the central bank. There is no market at all. So nobody borrow from the market. Actually, what they are going to do is borrow, they borrow from the uh, central bank and then invest it invest it, lend it to, it to the market. So there's no, uh, nobody who supply uh, um, uh, money, who, uh, who borrow from the market. All of them are, one, all of them are, are going to lend the, lend, lend the money to the market. So uh, there's no money, uh, sorry, market interest rate above discount rate. Yeah, right, yeah. another one. Uh, interest rate for excess reserve. This is uh, interest rate when you invest it. Well, when you lend it. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, interest rate for reserve, excess reserve is 10%. What if uh, market rate is 5%? When you lend money, the higher the better. So nobody lend money to the market. Right, everybody, I mean, a commercial bank, all the commercial bank put the money uh, at the central bank, which gives higher return than the market. So um, if the interest rate, uh, market rate has to be uh, above interest rate, interest rate for uh, excess reserve. So, um, so you don't have a, a short term uh, money market, but uh, you can control. So you don't know the actually market interest rate, but you can control. You know um, money, uh, the market interest rate is below the discount rate. And then you know uh, money, uh, I mean, interest rate, money, uh, money uh, market interest rate is above 
uh, interest rate for excess reserve. So, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, what happened? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, market rate is actually somewhere. You don't know where exactly, but uh, in between discount rate and interest rate for excess reserve. So, even you don't have a uh, uh, bond secondary market um, or, uh, uh, I mean, even if you don't have a bond primary market, you know uh, market, you, you can control uh, market interest rate by using discount rate and the interest rate for excess reserve. If you, uh, if you uh, lower the discount rate, and then raise interest rate for excess reserve, market rate is going to be somewhere in between. And then you, so in, in this way, you can control uh, money uh, market interest rate. Um, okay, in developing countries, um, um, like, uh, right, like uh, many countries have a primary uh, bond market, but they issue only twice per month so in between two so every two two weeks they issue so in between two weeks uh nobody knows nobody has idea uh, about uh, market interest rate but uh, if you use if the central bank use discount rate and the interest rate for excess reserve you know uh you have some idea about the market uh, interest rate all right and then, um, okay, we are going to, uh, today I'm going to talk about reserve requirement. This one, the second one, reserve, uh, required reserve ratio, uh, how it works um, through uh, credit creations. Okay, let me, all right. So, um, if we, if we have time, uh, I'm going to introduce three models. Uh, if not, maybe model one and two. And then um, model one, um, based on the Basel three, banks have to put up own capital, which include cash reserve in proportion to asset. Uh, Basel three is actually a um, uh, bank of international, uh, I mean, association of the bank uh, actually, uh, uh, decided the rule for uh, bank capital and asset. Um, and then Basel three requires bank have to have a um, um, certain percentage or uh, maybe 8% or 12% of uh, capital uh, in proportion to their asset. Yeah. So that means actually uh, when you increase asset, uh, you have to set aside uh, some of the uh, cash reserve that can be counted as uh, own capital in addition to uh, paid in capital. Yeah. That is actually uh, stock, I mean, uh, to uh, mark, uh, total stock uh, of the banks. Yeah. And then, um, all right, so, um, so that's, Okay, so that's why actually monetary policy requires that banks should already put up reserves, which is equivalent to the part of loan asset. So you, if you want to, um, if you want to increase asset and then to meet Basel three requirement, uh, then um, um, you have to set aside all a certain portion of uh, loan as a cash reserve. How this happened to how this happened to uh, banking sector balance sheet and central bank balance sheet and the private sector balance sheet? Uh, let us look at the balance sheet of three players. Yeah. And then um, first, I'm going to show uh, uh, numbers, yeah. and then then we move on to mathematical model building. Um, from uh, you have a okay when you have a empiric, uh, when you when you do the empirical analysis, observe the data and then um, 
form, you are formulate your own theory, right? And then uh, you use the data and to prove uh, theory. Then you have a, a kind of, uh, then you, your theory, you, you convert your theory into mathematical, mathematical model. And then when you have a mathematical model, uh, very simplified from the actual reality, uh, real economy, but still policy implication can be withdrawn from mathematical model. That's what I'm going to show. All right. And then let's say the, uh, you have a new countries and then you have a new central bank. First, uh, credit creation is coming from central bank. Central bank then to the commercial bank for $100. So it's actually uh, for the central bank uh, view, central bank lo give a uh, loan for $100 to commercial bank. Loan is a liability for, uh, for uh, borrowers, but uh, loan is an asset uh, from the angle of banks. So $100 is in asset. And then this $100, uh, borrowed from the commercial uh, by from the central bank uh, um, is actually liability. So one hundred dollar in liability of the uh, one hundred uh, in the liability of commercial banks, right? And then next, commercial bank lend eighty percent of borrowing. Um, or uh, sorry, maybe this one uh, I mixed up with the uh, Japanese one. Uh, so out of um, uh, hundred dollars. Commercial bank uh, lend eighty percent of hundred dollars to loans, and then uh, reserve ratio, statutory reserve ratio is ten percent, which means actually out of eighty eighty dollars, eight dollars uh, commercial bank have to uh, uh, deposit at the central bank. So eighty dollars uh, loans one is actually um, asset for the commercial bank. And then uh, uh, $8 deposited at the central bank is actually, I mean, $8 uh, is an asset. And then um, out of $100, you, you get a loan $80 and the deposit $8. So the rest is $12, $12 uh, commercial bank uh, hold as a cash reserve. Then eighty dollars in loan one is actually liability from the uh, angle of private sector. So we put uh, eighty dollars in liability side of commercial bank. Uh, sorry, uh, private sector uh, balance sheet. Okay, and then um, private sector they borrowed eighty dollars for investment purpose. Uh, so. Uh, this uh, one third of borrowing uh, com private sector use uh, for investment. Let's say um, buying, purchasing um, uh, uh, computer system for the factory, yeah, which is actually uh, investment. And then rest of the uh, money, uh, 80 dollar minus 27, uh, which is the investment uh, uh, is actually 53, 53 uh you you are going to buy something out for using this 53 but now uh you don't uh you don't uh use it so for temporarily the uh the private sector put 50 dollar uh, 53 dollars in deposit of the commercial bank so uh 50 dollar is asset asset for private sector but liability for commercial side, commercial banks yeah, deposit is a liability for commercial bank because they have to return later on. All right, and then, all right, so commercial bank receive a deposit $53. Um, so uh, commercial bank, again, the same thing, 80% uh, of $53, uh, commercial bank give loans uh, to private sector. And then, out of forty-three dollars uh, of loan to uh, ten percent, which means four dollars, uh, commercial bank has to um, uh, 
deposit at the uh, central bank. That's actually for that as. So for that uh, stays in as an asset in commercial bank, but uh, is a uh, liability uh, for central bank. And then, uh, so out of 53 dollars, uh, commercial bank used uh, 43 for loan and four uh, dollars for deposit at the central bank. So six dollars uh, remains as a cash reserve. Okay. And then 43 dollars is an asset from uh, uh, for the commercial bank, but is a borrowing liability from the private sector. Okay. Um, so um, again, uh, actually this is a repetition. Yeah? Maybe uh, let me uh, explain one more, one or two, then uh, finish because uh, it's a repetition, right? Forty-three dollars borrowed from the uh, commercial bank by the private sector. Uh, private sector use one third, which is actually fourteen for investment. Maybe they uh, they bought maybe uh, conveyors or uh, capital uh, machine. Then the rest, which is actually forty-three minus fourteen, twenty-eight, is going to be deposited at the commercial bank. Twenty-eight, right? 28 is an uh, asset and the investment uh, 14 is also asset. Why? They used 14 dollars for, for the purchase of uh, computer system as well as uh, uh, capital uh, equipment. Yeah. Okay, uh, because when you buy something, uh, which is actually capital good. Capital goes uh, is an asset, yeah. Like um, uh, like um, uh, like a land. Um, when you you have a hundred dollars, and then you buy the land, uh, paying hundred dollars. So you you lose uh, cash for hundred dollars, but you have a another asset uh, for hundred dollars. So in terms of balance sheet, uh, actually uh, you are not spending. Actually. It's actually uh, the switching from financial uh, resources to fixed asset. So it's still an asset. Yeah. Okay, so in this way, um, you keep uh, repeating uh, these uh, operations. And then what happened uh, at the end? Let's see. So this is, uh, yeah, this is, uh, 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 we, I, I repeated uh three times same thing and then so we okay uh, uh, in, in real economy this continues forever yeah uh, but uh let's take a look at uh as of law on three yeah all right um first uh this transaction started with 100 dollars uh, loan from central bank to commercial bank, right? And then how many loans do we have? Uh, 80, 43, 23, and 12, yeah? Um, so the loan from the central bank to banking sector is 100, uh, created actually 158 uh, loans. This multiplication effect occurs because private sector deposits some of the unused cash at the se uh, banking sector, even for a short uh, period of time. Yeah. If they don't de deposit it, uh, then this multiplication effect or credit creation, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so private sector receive a loan from a commercial bank and then use some of them for purchase of capital good, but uh, uh, deposit uh, less of the uh, borrowing at the set, at the commercial bank. That is going to be lent to someone else, and then this person uh, also uh, unused money. Uh, this person also deposit unused money at the commercial bank, which is also lent to someone else. So uh, rep repetition of this cycle is going to create lots of money. Yeah. 100 dollars is now 158. Maybe uh, 
how many times this repeat? We don't know, but we can we can estimate uh, using a mathematical model. Right, okay. What happened if people don't trust bank? This is a typical uh, case in financial crisis. Okay. When people don't trust banks, then they are, going, they are not gonna deposit the money, right? If people don't deposit the money or entrepreneurs de don't deposit the money at the a commercial bank, then, you know, credit creation process stops. So even though a uh, commercial bank borrow hundred dollars from central bank, hundred dollars uh, is lend maybe one hundred dollars to someone else, then this guy doesn't uh, deposit, which means actually hundred dollar doesn't uh, grow uh, like uh, this case. Yeah. So, which means actually uh, all the lending, bank lending stops, which means actually investment uh, is going to slow down or investment stops actually, then GDP stops, GDP growth stops. And then also what if banks buy government bond instead of loans to the private sector? Uh, well, this is a case in Japan. Um, yeah, okay, uh, banks, is buying a lot of bond, uh, government bond, yeah, in case of Japan. Why? Why government? Well, well why commercial banks uh, buy uh, lots of bond, government bond, instead of uh, lending to the private sector? All right. Um, uh, why? Because look at Japan. Uh, our economy population is aging. That means actually population is going to shrink. Yeah, 20 years later, we have less population. That means what about market? People decrease, the number of people decrease, the market size is going to be shrink, right? So investor knows Japanese market is going to decrease. So they are, they are not gonna borrow. They are not gonna undertake investment. Uh, uh, by borrowing money from this uh, commercial bank, yeah. and then but they have to they have to um, uh, make a return because they receive lots of uh, deposit, and then uh, when they they deposit the cash in their deposit, their banks have to uh, return the, the deposit with interest rate. Yeah. If we, uh, when a commercial bank don't lend to private sector. But still, they have to uh, pay uh, interest rate to deposit that. How that actually uh, commercial bank buy government bond? Yeah. Government bond comes with coupon, which is actually interest rate interest. So, uh, uh, so banks uh, buy government bond instead of giving loan to private sector. What happened is actually. Uh, slow down of investment. This is what's happening in Japan. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then this is happening not only in Japan, in many other countries. Uh, sometimes, uh, all right, in case of Jordan, uh, I used to work in Jordan, and the same thing, uh, but uh, we due to different reasons. Jordanian banks are always buying government bond, not lending to private sector. And then when I was in Jordan, I visited uh, uh, well, well, one of my um, work is actually to uh, to promote uh, bond, government bond market. Yeah. And then uh, uh, so the, the biggest player in the government bond market is the banks. So we visited uh, government, uh, sorry, uh, banks. And then I asked uh why you guys are buying bond a bond and then instead of uh lending their answer they have uh, two answers one uh uh is i think Muiz knows <laughs> because i mentioned this one <laughs> at the uh, uh seminar uh is actually uh private sector company do not have a proper uh, manner of booking, bookkeeping. You know, when 
private sector borrow money from the uh, commercial bank, they have to give the information uh, that actually in a presentable manner. That's actually, they have to follow international, international financial uh, reporting standard. Yeah, But their, their document and the information are not uh, prepared in, uh, in accordance to uh, international uh, financial uh, reporting standard. So, um, well, no information, no loans. The another uh, reason uh, banks mentioned why they don't, for the reason why they don't lend to the private sector is actually uh, lack of collateral. All right, uh, in many countries, big corporation without, commercial bank lend to big corporation without uh, collateral. But of course, SMEs, particularly SMEs, uh, SME, uh, when they borrow from the bank, they have to put the uh, collateral, which is mostly land. But in case of Jordan, uh, there's no uh, cadastry, which is actually land information repo le uh, repos repository system. So database for land, you know, who owns and uh, what squares and uh, where is the location. Yeah? But uh, there's no information database for land. That's why actually, okay, one day banks uh, had a, a collateral from SME that's actually, hey, I have a, I own this uh, land. So could you please lend me? Okay, but next day uh, banks find out this land is not owned by this person. So no collateral, no loans. Yeah. So that's why actually uh, uh, in developing countries, uh, uh, promoting, I mean, uh, preparing a cadastry, uh, a cadastry, or cadastry, I don't remember, uh, land rep uh, repository system is actually crucial for to increase the lending to SMEs. And also, um, uh, you know, uh, how can I say, uh, 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 education to follow or uh, accounting standard system. I mean, a, a, a bookkeep, big, uh, bookkeeping manner uh, in accordance to uh, international uh, financial reporting system. Yeah. That actually helps uh, SME uh, borrow from the banks. Okay, um, so uh, now we move we move on to a mathematical model. Okay, previously we are using data, uh, numbers, and now uh, we, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, mathematical uh, sign, well, signs. And then uh, required reserve ratio is beta, uh, pre which was actually 10% in previous model. And the bank's propensity to lend, which was one third. Now it's, uh, we assign alpha, yeah. And then private sector investment propensity uh, out of uh, uh, money borrowed from the commercial bank, they are lending, uh, oh, uh, sorry, uh, alpha is 80%, but uh, uh, sheeta is actually one third. Yeah. Uh, all of them has to be less than one, right? Uh, because you cannot deposit more than you receive. Yeah. And also uh, you cannot lend uh, more than uh, you have. Uh, and then private sector investment privacy the same. Uh, you you borrowed one hundred dollars. You cannot lend. Uh, you cannot use more than one hundred. So sheeta has to be always less than one. The beta alpha also same. The less than one. Okay, we are more going to build up the mathematical model from here. Uh, in order to explain uh, to analyze credit uh, creation process. Okay. All right. Now central bank lend to commercial banks for A, which was 100, yeah. And then, um, so uh, 100 data, which was, uh, which is now A, is going to be lent to private sector as, uh, as a loan, uh, and then uh, ratio to lend private sector out of uh, cash received is alpha. So alpha A, uh, alpha was actually previously 80%, right? And then um, reserve 
uh, required reserve rate e ratio is actually beta. So uh, alpha A multiplied beta is a deposit by the commercial bank at the central bank. And then the cash reserve is uh, you give loans alpha A, deposit alpha beta A. So A minus alpha A minus alpha beta A is going to be a cash a reserve. And then uh, uh, alpha A, A, which is a loan uh, to the commercial uh, uh, private sector by the commercial bank is going to be in liability. And then alpha A is going to be uh, used uh, 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 in terms of percentage of Sheeta. Sheeta uh, can be a one third yeah, uh, in previous, uh, it was one third uh, in previous model. And so uh, private sector have alpha A. So uh, the investment uh, is actually Sheeta alpha A. And so the rest, which means alpha A minus Sheeta alpha A is going to be deposited at the uh, commercial bank. And this one, again, uh, uh, Francis one minus Sheeta alpha A is going to be uh, extended to the uh, lend to the lend to the uh, private sector as a loan, uh, which you have to multiply alpha. So hyphen one minus Sheeta uh, alpha squared A is going to be uh, lent uh, to private sector. And then um, uh, out of Francis one minus Sheeta alpha second uh, to the second power A uh, portion of beta is going to be, uh, beta portion is going to be uh, deposited at the central bank. So uh, um, uh, high uh, Francis one minus Sheeta Francis closed uh, alpha to the second square beta A is going to be a deposit by the center by the commercial bank at the central bank, and the rest is going to be a cash reserve. Okay, um, so we it's a kind of tedious operations, but we repeat it, repeat it, we repeat it. Then, uh, or maybe this, this is, we stop here. Uh, we stop here uh, because when we have uh, maybe four or five uh, samples, we can uh, generalize. Uh, okay, this is the uh, balance sheet of central bank and the commercial bank and the private sector after four operations of uh, uh, bank lending deposit bank lending to the private sector, private sector deposit at the commercial bank. Yeah. And then this deposit is going to be again used to the, uh, as, a uh, as a loan to uh, private sector. Okay, um, so uh, this is the, uh, this we can, uh, we can, we, we can extract some information from this uh, uh, balance sheet. Yeah. Okay, let us, Talk, let, let us this I mean analyze loans. Well, uh, investment plays a crucial role in economic development and economic growth. So uh, investment cannot happen without loans. So uh, in order to uh, promote investment, uh, promote economic growth, we have to have a good loans. Yeah. So that's why actually uh, can monetary policy uh, improve. Uh, how monetary policy affects loans, bank loans. That is actually one of the research objective of this uh, exercise. So look at the uh, bank loan, one, two, three, four. Alpha A, parenthesis one minus theta, alpha to the second square A, you know. Uh, so we look at this, we, we add up all the four items like this, you know, uh, you know this uh, is going to continue as long as you have a uh, new uh, depositors as well as uh, uh, borrowers. So forever, yeah. Okay, so uh, we sum up the bank loans, one, two, three, four, and then uh, we have to, then we 
see some kind of uh, uh, well relationship in this uh, backgrounds, yeah, and then uh, we are going to use series a uh, uh, rule of series that is actually one plus alpha plus alpha squared plus alpha to the third power plus alpha to the fourth power. If you add up uh, this series, then uh, it's going to be approximated by one over one minus r. Uh, I mean, r when r is actually less than one. Yeah. Okay, uh, perhaps you learned, maybe uh, some of you might may have learned, but uh, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, why this works in the next slide. Okay, let's say you have a one plus r plus r to the second power plus r to the third power plus r to the fourth power uh, is going to be, let's suppose that's actually equal to s. So uh, we multiply r to the s is, is going to be, is, is, is shown uh, the third equations. Yeah? R s equal uh, r plus r to the second power to the uh, plus r to the third power plus r to the fourth power. Yeah, and then now s minus alpha s. Yeah? Let's uh, uh, add up s minus. I mean, sorry. Uh, let's uh, let us uh, uh, extract r s from s. S minus Rs, yeah. So you uh, one, f so which means actually uh, first equation minus uh, first e equation multiplied by R. So uh, R minus R is zero. Alpha to the second R, R to the second power minus R to the second power is zero. R to the third power minus R to the third power is zero. You know. At the end, uh, you are going to have a one plus r to the infinity power, right? R is is less than zero, so zero point nine or zero point seven. So when you uh, raise maybe one hundred, uh, when you uh, when you have a, a zero point seven to the uh, hundredth power or uh, zero point seven to the uh, raised to the uh, power of one million, it's almost zero, negligible, right? So actually, um, which means all the component r plus r to the second power, r to the third power are going to be offset and then only one stays. That's why actually uh, s minus r rs is approximated by one, yeah? So, uh, from here, you can approximate by uh, uh, you can uh, you can you can detect uh, s is approximated by one over uh, one minus r. We are I'm going to I'm I'm using this uh, rule uh, applied to uh, some of the bank loan. Look at uh, uh, these first equations. If you say if you take alpha a outside the parenthesis, you have a one plus uh, parenthesis one minus theta alpha plus one minus theta to the second power alpha to the second power, and then one minus theta to the third power alpha to the third power. Looks like uh, uh, when alpha, I mean, sorry, when alpha r equal one minus theta multiplied by alpha, then uh, you, if you, then it's we can use this uh, the rule of series. Yeah. So uh, um, all the one minus theta alpha is replaced by the r, which is actually uh, less than one uh, because theta is less than one and alpha is less than one. So actually uh, one minus theta uh, multiplied by alpha is less than one. So we use this uh, series, I mean, a uh, rule of series. And then we, so um, um, that's actually uh, uh, shown in these equations. Bank loan is approximated by alpha over one minus uh, parenthesis one minus theta, parenthesis cross alpha, 
uh, multiplied by a. Yeah. Okay, this, um, so uh, this shows uh, if you increase money supply a, I mean, not money supply, uh, discount, uh, money supply through discount window by one unit, uh, bank loan is going to increase this much. Yeah, if you take a derivatives. So alpha, um, you need all what you all what you need is actually to estimate uh, alpha uh, by econometric way. Yeah? Alpha is the here. Um, go back to maybe, maybe number two. Is actually propensity to propensity of the banks to lend when you have a. Uh, deposit R, uh, A, uh, alpha portion is going to be lent to the uh, private sector. Okay. So this can be uh, estimated by uh, econometrics uh, regression analysis. Then if then theta also can be uh, estimated by the data, a bank transaction, then you know, uh, you know if you, uh, increase one unit of money supply through uh, uh, discount window, then you know how much bank lending is going to increase yeah? so that you can control the economy. Yeah. Okay, this can control bank loan by mani manipulating A, discount window loans to the banks. Okay, now anyone notices in terms of monetary policy implications? Uh, well, may, in the first place, um, this this exercise is to analyze uh, the monetary policy that's actually uh, a required reserve rate uh, on credit creations. Yeah. What was the required reserve rate? Was it alpha or theta? No. Let's go back to the in the first place. Actually, required reserve rate is beta. Do can we find the data here? Can we find a sorry? Can we find a, de, a beta in these equations? No. That means uh, if you follow uh, Basel C and then ba uh, banks uh, increase. Uh, 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 required reserve rate uh, deposit in proportion to asset, uh, which is the loans. Uh, if the banks take this kind, this behavior, the monetary policy is not effective. That what it shows. Yeah. All right, then um, let us talk about risk management. Risks for the banks always lie in asset side. I mean, mostly unless you borrow from the abroad. Yeah. Liability in case of uh, uh, local deposit uh, do not increase, but while asset value uh, falls, asset value when the uh, all right when uh, private sector go into go into bankruptcy, then you lose asset value, right? And also you buy bond but uh, bond price falls, then you also lose asset values. Yeah. So that's why actually uh, maybe uh, this car, uh, capital uh, car, uh, adequate ratio, uh, I didn't mention car, car here, uh, uh, maybe, sorry, maybe car is there over there, okay. All right, uh, that's why actually private capital, uh, uh, for the risk, to buffer the risk, uh, tier one capital uh, is crucial. Yeah. All right, tier one capital is actually uh, core, ca it's called core capital. Yeah. Core capital of the banks. How we compute? It's about equity capital, K plus reserves. Reserve is divided into two. As you can see, a required reserve, which is the deposit of the commercial bank at the central bank, as well as cash reserve. Cash reserve is a reserve, cash. Uh, which is not used for uh, loans or uh, deposits at the central bank. Yeah. And then let's uh, compute cash reserve. 
we had a cash reserve over there. Yeah. Uh, here, um, this part, reserves for loan one, reserve for loan two. If you add up these one minus alpha minus alpha beta A, and you know the equation the, uh, below the this one, if you add it up, then you have uh, uh, this one. Um, and then, um, yeah. okay, and then uh, you can also compute uh, required reserve too. And uh, then you have uh, uh, cash reserve, which is one minus alpha minus alpha beta over one minus uh, parenthesis, one minus theta parenthesis cross alpha multiplied by A uh, and required reserve, which is actually alpha B over one minus uh, parenthesis, one minus theta parenthesis cross alpha multiplied by A. Then you, if you have two uh, cash reserve and uh, reserve ratio, and then let us neglect K. In this case, you can compute uh, uh, capital adequacy ratio, CAR. Um, um, all right, then, um, uh, sorry, um, so that's, uh, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I'm sorry for <laughs> interruptions. Um, okay, looks, equation looks a little bit complicated, but if you uh, consolidate this equation, you have a very simple equation like one minus alpha over alpha. And then so this is a uh, indicator which shows uh, risk uh, and the buffer of the commercial bank. Yeah. Car, can you see beta in this car equation? No, it's all consisting from uh, alpha, right? So, uh, when the commercial bank's behavior, lending behavior is commercial bank put up uh, uh, reserve at the central bank in proportion to asset, then no matter how uh, central bank manipulate beta, which is a reserve, required reserve ratio, nothing happened to bank lending. That is shown in this, uh, uh, a modeling exercise. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. And then, uh, what about monetary aggregate? Yeah. Monetary aggregate is actually um, uh, is computed by a minus. Um, um, well, not sorry, not monetary aggregate, but uh, uh, this, uh, base, uh, monetary base which is actually a uh, uh, monetary policy instrument by the commercial bank. Yeah. Let's go back to um, balance sheet of a commercial bank. Uh, we don't, uh, perhaps we don't have it. Uh, uh, Professor Somia. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Your time is five minutes. Remaining. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for uh, a note, uh, reminding. Okay, so, um, okay, let's say, um, Okay, um, uh, okay. Um, let's talk about uh, cash in circulations, which is actually cash uh, uh, circulated in the economy, which is actually uh, uh, liability part of liability, liability part of the central bank. This is a called uh, reserve, uh, sorry, uh, base, uh, monetary base. And then central bank use monetary basis and uh, to uh, central bank uh, manipulate monetary base to affect money supply. And then currency in circulation is computed in uh, from A uh, minus uh, required reserve. And then you have a, 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 a compute, I mean, the equation at the below. That means actually when you increase uh, reserve, uh, ratio, then you have, uh, uh, you can decrease uh, cash circulation. This is actually uh, uh, impact of monetary policy. So uh, overall, uh, as long as uh, 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 banking sector uh, behave like uh, uh, Basel III request, I mean, uh, suggests, 
then um, required uh, reserve uh, rate, rate, which is uh, one of the powerful uh, monetary policy instrument of the developing countries, is no impact. I mean, no, I mean, it's not very effective in terms of controlling uh, bank lending. Okay, so that's what I wanted to uh, show you uh, today. Um, I prepared another uh, model, which is actually, in this case, you are not, um, you are not, uh, uh, okay, you are not depositing a portion of the loan, but first you uh, make sure reserve first. So you put the reserve money first, then the rest is going to be allocated to loan and deposit. In this way, um, um, if you, uh, in this way, you we repeat this one, and then the outcome is uh, it's different from uh, what we saw here. Yeah. If you computed, um, in this way, we compute this one, and then the same operation, uh, add up loan one, two, three, four, and then you get the uh, uh, equation like this. But in this case, uh, we, kn we know uh, what, in this case, we, the reserve requirement ratio is, actually, where is it? Uh, sorry for, okay. Reserve required ratio is alpha. In this case, we have alpha here. So uh, when the banks, so in conclusion, banks uh, behave, uh, put aside money for the uh, cash reserve first, which is actually for defensive purpose, then in this case, uh, monetary policy works. So when first model is actually, uh, is a booming economy, banks want to lend. Uh, so that's why actually they are curious about cash reserve. In that case, monetary policy required reserve ratio, it doesn't work. But when the crisis happened, then the banks want to build up cash reserve first, then uh, monetary, I mean, policy, which is actually reserve requirement, it works. So uh, depending on the bank behavior, uh, this uh, required reserve ratio, uh, one of the powerful monetary policy uh, works, or sometimes it's not effective. All right, this is uh, the end of my lecture today. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Professor Tomei, for your interesting and encouraging lecture. So the, for the next session, we will have a Professor Munawar from Brawijaya University to deliver the, another interesting uh, lecture, which the lecture is about the impact of uh, financial performance of commercial bank on the poverty. And before the Professor Munawar deliver the uh, lecture, I will read the uh, CV for, from him. So let me share the screen first. Yeah, so here are the CV from Professor Munawar. So Professor Munawar is the professor or Guru Pesar at Faculty of Economic and Business, Brawijaya University. And uh, he is graduated from uh, University de Nice, Sofia Antipolis, France uh, in 1990 for master degree and for 19, uh, 1994 for doctoral degree. And uh, he is majoring in ec macroeconomics and also monetary economics. And <clears throat> For his uh, her, uh, his experience, uh, he has many so many so many experiences in teaching and also uh, researching. So we, here we can see that he is, uh, has experience at uh, staff of DPRD or a local council in East Java province. As also he has some uh, experience in Ise Mala. Uh, 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 this is organi uh, international. Uh, this economics association from uh, Basel Economics, and now uh, maybe this is the brief CV from him. So let's stop 
the CV and uh, <clears throat> let's invite Professor Munawar to deliver the lecture. So please, Professor Munawar, time is yours. Professor Munawar, could you uh, deliver your lecture now, please? Sorry, Professor, we can hear you. You are muted. Okay, okay, okay. I'm <laughs> scared. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mois, yeah. I forget your name, yeah. <laughs> you are in Japan, so I forgot your name. <clears throat> okay, uh, distinguished audience and student, let me share my research. I conducted last year, <clears throat> yeah, and let me to share my presentation okay 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 okay, okay, okay. Uh, share screen and then okay. can you see my powerpoint yes we can see it, professor okay the topic today is Uh, commercial bank and regional property Indonesia. It is my research I conducted last year, yeah, financed by Brawijaya University Grant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me to tell you why I am interested in the topics. Yeah. First of all, when we are talking about the role of bank in economic development, many people focus on the role of bank to support good. But not many. Article of people discussing the role of commercial bank in fighting regional property yeah especially in indonesia yeah okay and then why i interested in bank because bank in indonesia are financial institution that dominate the finan financial system and according to rodar and sik and onohan Bank based financial system are more effective in fighting property than market based financial system. Yeah. And then the second, why I am interested in regional property? <clears throat> Because in Indonesia, regional property problems are more safer than national property. Yeah. Indonesia has been able to reduce property rate during two decades. The property reduction fell from 23% in 1999 to only 9% point 20 percent in 2019 yeah okay but the low property interest rate in Indonesia did not reflect cross regional condition in Indonesia yeah regional property rate in Indonesia are very unequal. An example, in 1999, yeah, the rate 
property rate in DKI Jakarta was almost four percent, but in Papua was twenty four percent, and then twenty years later. Jakarta was the province with the lowest interest rate, uh, property rate. Yeah. Property rate in Jakarta was 3.42% versus in Papua 26.55%. So this is why I am interested to discuss the impact of commercial bank in regional property. <clears throat> yeah, and then uh, next to the advantage of this research. Yeah, okay. Most of the previous study use data panel that were contrasted from a combination of several developing countries or com a combination of developing and developed countries. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think it is the problematic. Why? Because when we teach many countries with different system in political and uh, financial system will create the problem what we call endogeneity. So one of the advantages of my study is that the study use data panel built from the provinces of one country. So it avoid the endogeneity problem caused by different in economic financial and political system. Okay. And then the main objective of the research is first, yeah, I want to test what we call Mackinnon hypothesis of conduit effects. Mackinnon underlined that saving or deposit has important role in producing property. Yeah. And then the second objective is to test the saw hypothesis about intermediation effect. Yeah. Uh, uh, the hypothesis is does commercial bank credit affect property? Okay. And then Next, we move to theoretical base. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, references dealing with the impact of financial sector on property are divided into two groups. The first is that reference that focus on the indirect effect mediated by growth. It means that financial sector effect first on growth, and then the second run, growth influence uh, uh, property. What we call it is direct, indirect effect. In some cases, this approach is called a uh, trickle down channel. Jadi, financial sector does not directly affects property, but financial sector affects growth and then the property. It is the first uh, approach. And then the second channel what we call direct channel. 
Yeah. In this case, the presence of commercial bank or financial sector has important effect on poverty. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, by expanded job creation and additional income for the poor. Yeah. Uh, credit can expand economic activity conducted by small and medium sized enterprises. And in some cases, uh, 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 people who obtain credits, they can use the credit to finance uh, 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 investment human, yeah, uh, to finance their children's education. And then sometimes the people who obtain the credit, they use the credit to finance the consumption. This is why uh, 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 the presence of commercial bank has direct effect on poverty. <clears throat> yeah, okay. And then next we we'll move to research frameworks. Okay, yeah. Uh, here, the role of the bank are represented by two variable, saving or deposits, yeah, yeah, affects directly poverty. And then the second variable is credit. Credit affects property. And then besides these two variable, I add other variable, yeah, that influence property. I call this uh, other variable uh, is control variable. Okay. So, yeah, we need saving. Okay, in my Kinon hypothesis, yeah, it is very difficult for poor to obtain credit for the bank. Yeah. Uh, so when the poor when the poor need fund to finance their business activity, they have to accumulate their own fund. Yeah. So one of the way to accumulate their fund is putting their fund in the bank. So they use saving as instrument to accumulate their fund until the amount is sufficient to finance their business plan. <laughs> yeah. So uh, saving influence uh, uh, property yeah, mediated by self fund accumulation. And then saving has direct effect on consumption smoothing, on uh, investment in human capital. <clears throat> Yeah, and then the last is the role of the credit. Yeah, credit can produce economic activity that finally produce uh, uh, create uh, uh, job opportunity and additional income for the poor. Okay, it is uh, 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 research frameworks, and then we move to research model, yeah? In this research, I use static and dynamic econometric model of panel data as follows, yeah? It is uh, a statics econometric model of panel data, yeah? And then the next is 
dynamic model of econometric panel data. Ya. Yeah. Where ya, yeah, pop property soft saving etc. And then you can see that uh, uh, besides saving and credit I include other variable these are PDRB ya yeah, product domestic regional bruto inflation education and economic structure and unemployment in this model why because a previous study confirmed that this variable has important role in reducing poverty <coughs> yeah okay yeah i think it is uh, common in econometric model and then what is the results uh, okay before discussing the result i want to show you uh, operational definition of variable yeah okay property here the percentage of population living below the poverty line of the total population uh, uh, it's often called head con index yeah saving yeah is the rate of third party deposit at commercial bank that consists of demand deposit saving deposit and time deposit yeah which are measured as percentage of the gross domestic regional product in current price and then the credit the rate of commercial bank credit yeah to the private sector yeah is expressed in percentage of the value of gross domestic regional bruto yeah and then <clears throat> uh, we include income yeah gdp yeah real gdp and then inflation here uh, uh, we use gross regional domestic product deflator index because there is no data about uh, inflation yeah consumer index in its province and then education is just literacy rates economic structure yeah represented by the percentage of value of pdrp that is derived from agriculture to the total of gdp and unemployment mean open unemployment rate <clears throat> and then what is the results yeah okay it is the result of estimation by using static model <clears throat> yeah uh, uh, there are three conventional static model in panel data yakni common effect model fixed effect model and then random effect model the question is which is the best result the best model yeah okay nah to choose the best result or the best model we have to do uh, something step by step yeah we use cho test to choose which is the better fam or common effect model the result is fixed aspect model is better than common effect model and then we continue to use Hausmann test yeah yeah and then the result is fixed effect model is more consistent than random effect model <clears throat> yeah so based on the statistical criteria we find that fixed effect model is the best model among these three model <clears throat> okay nah? and then uh, because we use uh, panel data we have to test yeah 
uh, 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 our model ya yeah, is containing individual effect or time effect based on Honda test or Lagrange multiple test we find that fixed effect model has an individual effect not the time effect <clears throat> and then we need to evaluate the robustness of the model yeah uh, we use two tests to evaluate robustness of the model first we use turbin waston turbin watson yeah, test and the result is the presence of serial correlation is real and then pp test yeah uh, so that homostic homoskedasticity assumption does not fulfilled so in conclusion static model fail to meet statistical criteria and then this uh, uh, references i reach there are two possible to overcome a static model first is dynamic model yeah of panel data and then nah it is the result when we use uh, uh, dynamic model yeah gmm yeah this is the results yeah we uh, employed two model of dynamic model arela nupon and blender pon yeah what is the results yeah yeah uh, in general based on statistical criteria all models are good but yeah the model fail to prove the effect of saving and credit on property so we have to try uh, uh, implementing other model and based on preferences i found that uh, 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 the next model is feasible generalized least square yeah fgls yeah fgls yeah uh, based on uh, references uh, uh, when static model <clears throat> does not fulfill uh, statistical criteria uh, 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 writer suggests to use feasible generalized least square and then what is the results yeah the result yeah okay this is the result and the estimation result using fgls are much better than result using static and dynamic model <clears throat> yeah we can see that uh, most of variable considered in this model significant and then uh, r square very high yeah okay and then based on the model we find that saving have no effect on regional property rates why credit can can significantly reduce property rates yeah and then by using the model yeah we find that all control variable have a significant effect with sign as expected yeah jadi uh, pdrb the sign is negative yeah inflation is positive education negative economic structure is negative unemployment is positive yeah uh, interaction 
between credit and unemployment is negative. Okay, so based on this three model, we conclude that uh, 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 FGLS model is the best. And this is why uh, uh, the discussion uh, we based on FGLS. Okay, <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned, saving have no effect on regional property rate in Indonesia. What does it mean? It means that the McKinnon hypothesis of conduit effect does not apply in Indonesia. And uh, uh, my finding is not in line or even contradictory with the result of study conducted by Janini and Koda. And then it means also that the saving in commercial bank are not a tool for the poor to accumulate fund to finance their business plan. Yeah, it means that uh, the hypothesis, uh, the McKinnon hypothesis uh, is refused in this uh, research. And then also saving in commercial bank are not a buffer for the poor yeah, to face the uncertainty of their life in the future. We use uh, saving yeah, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to meet our uncertainty in the future. Yeah? Uh, okay, maybe we will have problem in education, in health and etc. Yeah. And then this result indicates that the poor people in Indonesia face many constraints in saving informal institutions such as commercial bank. I think it is not uh, 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 easy to understand. Yeah. I think it is not difficult to understand. Yeah. For the poor people, it is uh, uh, difficult to uh, obtain to get bank services, including uh, putting saving in the commercial bank. <clears throat> okay, and then based on study conducted by Karlan Razan and Zidane, the uh, the constraint include high transaction costs low trust from financial institution, yeah, and then other factor. And then the next, yeah, is what about the credit? This study find that credit has negative and significant impact on property. Mean higher credit, lower property rates. Okay. Yeah? This finding proof that so hypothesis about intermediation effect applied in the region of Indonesia. Yeah. It could be that credit influences property reduction because credit can be used to finance food, education, housing, yeah, health, etc. Yeah. Okay. And then all control variable have significant on regional property in Indonesia. GDP has negative effect on property. Yeah, the study in line with study conducted by yeah, many researchers like that. And then inflation and unemployment has positive effect on property. High inflation, high unemployment in that region mean uh, 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 higher property rate in that region. And then education has the potential to reduce property. My study uh, 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 in line with study conducted by Danato, Norvales, and Duflo for Indonesian case, and in line with Barham, Gondor, and Singh for other countries. And then uh, the, the, the last result 
is that provinces with the strong agriculture sector tend to reduce property rate. Yeah. Uh, 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 my research supported support uh, uh, research finding by Rafaleon and Diao. As a conclusion, yeah, this research was conducted to examine the impact of commercial bank on regional property in Indonesia. The role of bank is represented by two variables. Yeah, saving and credit, and we hope that these two variables uh, have a significant impact on property. However, the results were not all in line with what we expected. Yeah, saving have no effect on property, but in other hand, credit can significantly reduce property. And the last. For this reason, banking development policy in Indonesia should not only be directed at mobilizing funds, but also followed by a stronger policy for extending credit to the public. And uh, 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 to find property in Indonesia, it is not sufficient to use banking policy. Banking policy must be equipped by other policy, such as growth policy, improve in education, yeah? education policy, and then uh, 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 stabilize inflation, and then creating additional job yeah? to reduce unemployment. Okay. It is my presentation. Thank you, Al Muiz. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Munawar, for your uh, interesting and also encouraging presentation. <clears throat> so, uh, let me screen share the uh, some question and also comment from from the participation. So, please wait a minute. Okay, so next is about uh, the uh, Q and A session. So there are uh, there are from uh, several questions from uh, participants. So first question is from uh, Mr. Setio Triwah Yudi. Uh, this question is for Professor Somia. So maybe I will invite Professor Somia to come back. Okay. Uh, Professor Samia, you have uh, some uh, question from the participant. For the first question is from Mr. Steele Triwayudi. The question is, what do you opinion about the development of currency money such as Bitcoin and what the impact on economy and what policies should uh, the central bank take? And the second question is, is it possible if the concept of money, not only M1, M2, M3, uh, but developed to M4 and and five and so on in order to capture the increasing of using money, what happened with the economy as a whole? Maybe you can uh, direct answer, Professor. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, maybe first one uh, from uh, uh, Mr. Fitriani. Uh, what's your opinion about Bitcoin money market? Yes, um, money market maybe not still yet, but uh, Bitcoin is going to be a powerful uh, actually uh, factors uh, in money market, um, uh, but which cannot be perhaps uh, contained or controlled by uh, uh, monetary policy, which means actually when we have a higher share in Bitcoin uh, in the economy, then it's going to be very difficult for central bank to uh, uh, control or you know manage macro uh, macro economy. That's why actually one that is one of the reason why uh, Chinese government or uh, People Bank of China, which is a central bank of China of China, um, is actually uh, trying to uh, develop a central bank. Uh, digital currency rather than uh, private sector driven drive uh, the uh, 
uh, this movement. And then second, uh, Bitcoin is underground economic or shadow economy. Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, cash is the uh, the most, uh, the largest instrument for uh, money laundering. So uh, Bitcoin, uh, whatever you use, where you use, how much you use, who used, is going to be decoded. So uh, that's why actually uh, when the share of the economy, uh, share of the Bitcoin in uh, money uh, increase, then actually it's very difficult to do uh, shadow uh, uh, economy. So actually good for the government to take, to have uh, revenue. Well, it's good, easier to tax them, tax the underground economy or shadow economic activities. And then uh, should I answer number three, uh, Muiz? Bitcoin is opportunity investment. That is true. Yes, it's true. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, um, yeah, uh, it, it's true. Uh, it's been increasing, uh, but it's very uh, speculative. Uh, but it's true. How equilibrium money market with bit, uh, Bitcoin? Uh, equilibrium, well, equilibrium money market. It Bitcoin. Perhaps uh, this is uh, similar to first question. Um, it, it is uh, the significant factor. Uh, which cannot be contained by controlled by the monetary uh, policy. The second uh, of Mr. Set uh, Tree Wahayudi. Is it possible if the concept of money? Uh, yes, actually, uh, uh, concept of money uh, is actually has been developed. Uh, Twenty years ago, we are only uh, collecting the data from central bank and the deposit monetary corporation, which is the commercial banks. But now, uh, deposit monetary financial institution, which is actually leasing companies. Leasing company is actually uh, in, uh, uh, in, engaged in uh, financial activities using credit. Yeah. So uh, uh, he's very right. Um, yeah. And what happened with the economy as a whole? Well, um, it's actually access to credit is more easier. So actually in terms of financial inclusiveness, uh, it's actually uh, improved financial inclusiveness, so, uh, which is good uh, uh, for the economy and then also uh, economic development and, the, and the, uh, the income inequality, right? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Professor Sumia, for your answer. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is also some question. There are also some questions from the another participant. Okay. So here from Aminullah Ahmad, uh, there are two questions. Maybe you can also answer. Okay, directly. Sure. Okay. What the future of banking, especially the uh, human resources, as we know, the technology uh, already replaced some function in the banking sector. For instance, some user almost didn't visit bank office. Yes, yes, that's a good uh, question. And uh, um, well, um, what can I say? Uh, banking separate operation is going to be going to change a lot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, how you do the banking sector operation is going to change. But uh, what they are going to do is going to stay. Perhaps uh, right now, I, as you guys, as you all may maybe know uh, about fintech. So uh, some of the Japanese uh, non-profit organization is actually lending money to the African firm, uh, which is growing, uh, what? I forgot the, the agricultural product, but uh, which is good for the country, I mean, uh, for the uh, us. So that's why actually, you know, uh, previously when I was uh, maybe in college, you know, you borrow from only bank nearby, but you can borrow from the uh, bank, bank abroad or, you know, uh, on the other side of the globe, you can borrow. As, and also, uh, um, uh, all right, uh, liquidity is is going to improve, which means actually, if you you have, you know, uh, previously, as if you don't have a cash, you couldn't buy anything. Now, if you don't have a cash, no problem. Not many people have a cash, and then people buy with card. Maybe. You know, uh, as time goes by, you don't have you don't have to ha carry even credit card. You can 
by with eye uh, ident identification, something like that. Um, so uh, I think uh, uh, right even right now, uh, not many. I mean, many people are sending money and receiving money without going to bank uh, branch or without visiting uh, bank ATM, automatic ter uh, AT Terra machine. So uh, this is going to be intensified. I mean, how is the future of the banking, uh, especially the, uh, as we know, the technology always replaced. Okay, the, this one is the same, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, is that okay, uh, Moise? Yes, uh, I think all, all questions. Okay, oh the, oh, the other one, okay, okay. Uh, uh, Yulia, uh, Ms. Yulia Indrawati, uh, have you used micro foundation approach to derive your banking, bank, uh, bank lending behavior with the risk model? Uh, which one is your cons constraint, uh, especially to capture the risk of lending your model? Okay, have you used, yes, uh, micro foundation approach. Um, perhaps this is about uh, my, uh, my, well, uh, to derive banking model behavior. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not very familiar with the micro foundation approach to derive banking uh, behavior. Uh, but, uh, you know, this area, uh, bank risk and uh, 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 finance, I mean, monetary policy has been uh, exploited by the lots of researchers. So, um, uh, and then what, which one is your constraint to capture the risk of? Hmm. Um, I, I'm sorry, um, so I'm not familiar with this uh, approach. Uh, you know, I'm not, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not, I don't know everything. I know very little. So uh, perhaps uh, uh, if she could uh, uh, give me a, uh, any information, I would very appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Samaya, for your answer. Uh, is there any uh, question from the all participants? Maybe for, uh, for Professor Munawar or Professor Samaya again? We have still a lot of time, about maybe one hour remain. Okay, so maybe uh, I will ask Professor Munawar as the uh, interesting presentation about the impact of credit and saving to please, 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 your voice. <laughs> oh, okay. Is it okay, Professor? Yeah, Munawar? yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Professor Munawar, for your presentation. Is it very interesting about the impact of credit and also uh, saving to reduce poverty in Indonesia, particularly in regional uh, province? So, my question is. To what extent a uh, saving or credit can affect property reduction? As in your model, you didn't any uh, you didn't include any interaction variable. Just uh, estimate the effect uh, directly. Oh, the your mean... voice is too low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I will uh, slow talk. So my question is: To what extent uh, credit and saving? Uh, could affect poverty reduction in case of your study. As your study mentioned, uh, you, I mean, in your model, you didn't include any interaction about uh, saving or credit with other variables. Just estimate the effect of credit and saving uh, directly to poverty re reduction. This is my, my first question. Maybe. And my second question is, uh, how about the role of education and also maybe the role of agricultural sectors that you have uh, studied that the effect also negative or uh, can be reduced poverty and to what extent they will reduce because maybe <clears throat> uh, poor people can uh, have can have in a higher education or higher uh, uh, employment uh, and then they will reduce poverty. So this is my question, Professor Munawan. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mois. Yeah, uh, my focus is on discussing the impact of uh, uh, commercial bank on uh, poverty. 
and I include other variable other than saving and credit just as control variable. Yeah. Uh, I found that uh, education is important in fighting poverty. Yeah, my uh, uh, research confirms this statement. And then what is the role of agriculture? We know that most poor people are in rural area. And most people in rural area rely on agriculture sector. So growth in agriculture sectors will have strong effect on property reduction in Indonesia. It is my hypothesis. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't run uh, the model for the rural and the urban. But uh, as far as I know in Indonesia, yeah, property in rural is more safer than in urban. This is why uh, 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 the role of agriculture is very important in this research. Okay. And then uh, I think there are another questions for me. Yeah. Uh, 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 Based on your research analysis, monetary uh, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, saving does not affect property. Maybe it correlates with classical dichotomy. Have you considered short run and long run analysis as classical and unicorn? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and then there are there is also question about financial finance financial deepening. Uh, I think there are many indicators to show financial deepening. The most popular indicator is the ratio of monetary aggregate to GDP. And some researchers use another indicator. An example, uh, 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 the ratio of credit distributed by bank to com private uh, sector to GDP. And other researchers use a broad indicators. That is the ratio of financial uh, asset to GDP. The question is, which is the best? I think it depends on the country. In developed country, I think, yeah, the best indicator is maybe the ratio between financial asset to GDP. But in developing countries, yeah, because uh, financial system is dominated by the bank, so in my opinion, the best indicator is the ratio of monetary aggregate to GDP. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, it is uh, my answer. And then the second, what about classical dichotomy? Yeah, classical dichotomy is strong debate between classical and Keynesian economists yeah, in literature. Yeah, uh, classical economists believe that uh, money or financial sector or money, especially money, have no impact on real sector. Money only influence nominal variable such as inflation, nominal uh, nominal interest rate, etc. But for the Keynesian view, money and financial sector has important role in economic development. And my study confirmed that yeah, 
uh, uh, classical economy does not apply in Indonesia. Why? Because credit has strong influence on poverty reduction in Indonesia. Okay, it is my answer, Muis. Can I answer all question? Yes, Professor Munawar, thank you very much uh, for your answer. Is there any question for Professor Sumia and Professor Munawar? There are some uh, remain time. As, uh, there are a lot of time that we have you no know, until twelve. Uh, Professor Munawar, maybe there is a question that not uh, cannot be shown in PowerPoint. So the question from Aminulo, uh, he asked about uh, uh, why the measurement of property around the world is not same among them. Can you explain about that? Ah, it is difficult. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because uh, uh, there are many indicator about the poverty. Why? Because in my opinion, because property is multidimensional. Property is not matter of monetary, but yeah, uh, 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 property is also related to an example political factor, social factor, etc. Yeah. So there are many indicator. And there are many explanation about the property. Yeah, for the sociologists, they can see property from social aspect. <laughs> for the political politician, they can see poly, uh, property from political aspect, etc. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in conclusion, property is complicated problem because has multi dimension aspect okay. okay yes okay thank you very much uh, professor munawar for your answer so is there any question again for uh, both professor we have a uh, space two special professor here about uh, in majoring of monetary and macroeconomics so if you have any question about that please ask freely we have a lot of time. Still, have, uh, still have a lot of time. No question. <laughs> okay, maybe uh, the last uh, conclusion. Maybe uh, can I I invite to Professor Somia and Professor Munawar to uh, giving the last conclusion about our uh, lecture today. Uh, maybe please first, uh, Professor Somaya, to giving a conclusion for the lecture. Well, uh, okay. Um, okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, I really appreciate you of uh, having this uh, opportunity to talk with uh, Indonesian colleagues and or, uh, as well as the students. Uh, my conclusion, well, I learned a lot from uh, Professor Munawa's uh, uh, I mean, research, uh, perhaps, uh, 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 which is actually very much uh, 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 instrumental in terms of uh, our research in uh, uh, international development, uh, graduate school of international development, because we are all focusing on the developing countries. Yeah. So that's why actually my uh, lecture is not really an open market operation, which is uh, widely uh, used in uh, advanced market, but uh, uh, reserve requirement and, uh, and other monetary policy, which is uh, usually used in uh, uh, developing countries. So uh, hopefully we can do the uh, collaboration work uh, between uh, uh, with, uh, your, your university and uh, uh, Nagoya University, since we have a very good uh, PhD student named Muiz, uh, so uh, he's going to be a, a kind of uh, intermediary between two uh, two universities. But thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, appreciate uh, uh, having this opportunity again. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Professor Sumia, for your uh, conclusion speech. So next, I will invite Professor uh, Munawar for giving your. Conclusion speech, maybe. 
Oke, okay. good morning Profesor Sumia. Nice meet you, ya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it is honor to be here with you. Ya, yeah. oke, okay. I think it is an interesting opportunity to make a collaboration between Brawijaya University and Nagoya University. Ya. Yeah. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. And uh, I would uh, uh, I would like to underline that uh, 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 fighting poverty is very difficult. Very difficult. This is why poverty become big problem across the world. Ya. Yeah. And for the moment I focus on the role of financial sector. Yeah. But I hope my colleagues to make research from another aspect. Yeah. And then we can collaborate together how to reduce, how to uh, uh, fight against poverty. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Munawar, for your conclusion speech. So uh, this is the final session uh, from uh, from me. Uh, so as the moderator, maybe I have uh, some inappropriate uh, speech. Uh, maybe I apologize. And then so uh, see you next uh, session. Uh, Professor Some will also give another lecture about uh, global financial market and also experiencing uh, working in the World Bank. So please uh, join uh, in the, this lecture in next week, uh, sorry, next day. And okay, so it's, it's all from me and I will uh, return to the moderator, Mbak um, Salsa Bila, please. Thank you very much uh, for uh, Professor For, for the honorable speakers for today, and also I would like to express, express my gratitude to Mr. Mu'is for moderating the session for today. Excellencies, distinguished guests, participants, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached conclusions of today's event. We have had productive and insightful time together, and this event is about to come to the very end. I hope you found the knowledge on, on this lecture and inf are informative and helpful. I would like to acknowledge upon Mr. Nurholi's PhD. As the Dean of Economics and Business Faculty, Brawijaya University, also to our honorable speakers, Mr. Associate Professor Masal Kazu Somea and Mr. Professor Munawar Ismail. Let us all be guided by all the things that we have learned and heard throughout the lecture and be able to see and influence our future. On behalf of the organizers, we would like to express our appreciation to all distinguished participants and guests for greatly contributing to today's international public lecture. Also, we invite you to join our other international public series and international sharing session by registering to bit.ly slash 3in1ekap. Finally, we would like to apologize for any mistakes during the event. It's been our pleasure to host this event, and I wish you all a pleasant day. Good afternoon. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Munawar Ismail, Prof. Masakazu Somaya, and Mr. al Mu'izidin. Oke, okay, thank you. <laughs> Oke, okay, ya. Yeah. Terima kasih Pak Munawar.